Hey, and welcome back to Game Talk. I'm your host, Ammon Mion. Today, I'm joined by Connor. Hey, guys. And Mike. Hello. And we are back after a, a semi-long hiatus, just a few weeks there. And this is our first episode uh, in a post-next-gen world. So the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X have been released. And before we talk any more about that, I will just say that uh, today's video component of the episode is Ghost Runner. So please check out the YouTube version of this podcast to see that. Okay, so with that out of the way, I have myself a PlayStation 5. I have been playing the crap out of this thing, and I have a lot to say. Uh, I've been watching some videos on Xbox, but I'm obviously not as qualified to speak on Xbox uh, as I would be if I had a console. But uh, Yeah, I don't know anybody who has a Series X yet. Uh, well, I know one person who won one from Taco Bell, but I don't know them well enough to have heard anything about it. Yeah, I mean, so, but just judging by impressions and such, like, everyone seems to be quite pleased with just, you know, next gen as a whole right now, at least the launch. Yeah. And certainly speaking from a PlayStation 5 perspective, and, and just to get the negative out of the way first, yeah, you get your launch day issues, your launch, uh, you know, like, I've had more crashes than I believe I did on PS4. Uh, really? Know, on at the same time frame yeah for sure uh, actually they're all specific to call of duty so there might be a cod thing it might just not yeah. be patched properly i see but I, I don't play i don't play console games a whole lot but just hearing about crashing on a console just blows my mind because that just didn't used to be a thing that didn't used to be a thing but you know these things are basically just pcs now i know but like i don't know i feel like a game should not ship with a crash in it, it really like, shouldn't that's a, until I, I mean, on PC, you're dealing with all this different hardware and stuff, but when you have one hardware spec, and like, honestly, like, a game, I, I'm gonna, like, there's not a lot going on in a Call of Duty game. Like, what's crashing? There must be a memory leak or something? Like, it must be because the crashes I experienced were in the campaign, not even like. See, that's just terrible. That's yeah. just really shoddy workmanship, in my opinion. Like, if, if, if you can't get something to work without crashing on a console, you cut it. Like, that's just insane to me. So, um, not to harp on that for too long, but I, I do did want to point out that this is indicative of maybe a larger issue. I've seen lots of reports of, you know, launch day PS5s failing, launch day Xboxes failing. And, you know, that's kind of par for the course. I think there's always a, you know, it's a small percentage, but a notable percentage of launch units are defective and it really sucks for the people who get them at launch and have yeah, that and that's case. not even like like it's not even that they launch a revision usually right it's just the first batch usually isn't that good yeah i mean as their manufacturing pipelines get more solid you know yeah. like these defects go away but i just wanted to shout that out because it is an issue and people have been affected by it and you know i can't imagine like if i got a ps5 and it broke after like two hours i would be very very upset no why yeah so all that, that out of the that's way. That's always happened. Yeah, that, that's always happened. Uh, though I will note, it seems more prevalent this time, but I also feel like it may be because it's 2020 and, you know, everyone can instantly post a video to YouTube or comment on it on a tweet or something. And uh, granted, that was there in 2013 too, but it's just like, you know, social media has fully exploded now. So I, I feel don't like know how much of it to believe anymore either with all this console war baby crap, like... Yeah, that's, I mean, again, that's always been there too, but again, it feels worse this time. Uh, but I just feel like I, I could see know. some, like, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all to find out that some of these people having crashes were, like, pointing a blow dryer into the air intake or something to overheat <laughs> it on purpose babies, or something. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, like, of course there have been legitimate crashes too and legitimate oh, yeah. heart failures. Yeah. I but I, but I, I totally but no saw somebody me. on Facebook saying that they weren't going to buy the new Series X because they heard I'm that they were starting talk. fires because of that stupid bait rumor. No but I didn't think anybody Whatever would believe that. Do, it looked we'll so do. fake. No, but like, I mean, that's coming on, from me, somebody who knows video games and knows computers and stuff. Good. Yeah. yeah. Somebody else just saw a picture of, a, of an Xbox giving off smoke, and that's scary to somebody who doesn't have any idea. You know, this was somebody saying they didn't want to buy it for their kids because of that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You know, like... As with most things, you know, like in 2020, you know, fake news is a problem that affects gaming as well, you know, like mm -hmm. obviously 
doesn't really matter too much for gaming, but it's a lot. Fake news has always been a huge problem in gaming, though. It really because, has. Uh, originally, because of the language barrier, because a lot of games came from Japan. <laughs> True. Yeah. Remember the remember the whole Mew under the truck thing? What's yeah. fake news? But anyway, next gen console launch. I I agree, Amit. Everything I've heard's been pretty positive. I think the. Just comparing this to the Xbox One launch, which like I didn't really care about the PS4 at the time, I wasn't really following that a whole lot. Mm -hmm. But I I followed the Xbox One launch just because of how angry everybody was about it. Oh yeah, that was yeah. What a different time. Yeah, and like looking at this launch compared to that one, like it's a huge yeah. You can look at an Xbox One and say there's nothing to play on it, but that's small fries compared to everything that went wrong with the Xbox One. Like, you can look at an Xbox series and say there's nothing to play on it. Yeah. Just correcting you there. Oh, did I say one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a mistake I'm going to be making for the next 10 years. Oh, so. yeah. Thanks, Microsoft. Thanks, Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, so, yeah. So, let's let's get in. Let's dive in a little bit. Nitty gritty. Uh, so, in terms of the PS5, at least, you know, just first thoughts, setting it up. Setup was really easy. UI is incredible. I'm in love with that UI. Sometimes I don't even play games and just navigate the UI and look at the settings and stuff, trying to that dig up all like, the That's things. very on brand, Amid. It really, it sounds like, <laughs> Amid's like the perfect PC gamer already. Maybe, maybe I am. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, scroll through your Steam library for a couple I, hours. Yeah. One pleasant surprise, though, is when I looked at my profile and looked at my games, lo and behold, not only does it give me the play times for my PS5 games, all of my PS4 games have their play times logged there too. I didn't realize that they didn't have that before, because um, I think I've had access to that information, I think, uh, through I GOG think Galaxy. To... Yeah, you have to go through like a third party to get that. Yeah, but that's the only place I've ever looked. I have all my accounts on GOG Galaxy, which is a pretty good app. Oh, no, that's it super nice. Play times. But yeah, so it's... I didn't even realize that was a problem on PS4. That's insane. I love yeah. looking at my playtime. Oh yeah, I love that. And you know, I, I that was probably the biggest UX omission to me. And the fact that it's there is is so, it's so great. Granted, it should have been there before, but you know, the fact that they include the PS4 times is is really good to me, and sort of makes up for it. And uh, just yeah, you know, I mean, realistically, back, this thing's backwards compatibility. Are you ever gonna hook your PS4 up again? Oh, I mean, absolutely not. Especially because, you know, all of my saves are backed up into the cloud, so I can just pull from yeah, there if I need. Yeah. Thank God you pay for that. I don't know if you saw that recently, but you can no longer uh, back up to a USB. Oh, that's too kind of crappy. Too yeah, you have to have PlayStation Plus and you have to back up to the cloud. That's the only way to back up your saves now on PlayStation. That's wild. Yeah, that was a misstep. Yeah, that's, that's dumb. Nintendo leading the way once again. <laughs> But, uh, so that first weekend, so as you guys probably know, I took Friday off to enjoy my console. So Friday through Sunday evening, I put in 31 hours into the PS5. Into what? What, what game? Uh, I, I, okay, so... I guess I've actually pretty meaty, but I, I'm I've thinking... Like, I've logged all my playtimes for my various games, so in total up to this point, I put 42 hours into PS5 games. Okay. And I'll list them out as follows. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 8 hours. Demon Souls, 9 hours. Spider-Man Miles Morales, 7 hours. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, 12 uh, hours. Oh, you 100% in Miles Morales, huh? No, I'm not even done with the story yet, actually. Oh, really? I heard the story was four, hour, 4 or 5 hours long, if you just went through it. I mean, I'm doing some side stuff, but mm. you know, I don't really understand that time frame. That doesn't seem right to me. So quiet here. But uh, Astro's Playroom, so five hours, and Sackboy, yes, A Big Adventure, one that, hour. Yeah, you're probably not going to get a whole lot more out of Sackboy there. So, really quickly, just talking about, I guess, we can talk about the games a little bit now, because that's sort of what makes this launch for me, and I, why I think the PS5 launch is quite special. It's a lot of games. It's uh, a lot of games. A lot of games, and a lot of quality games. Let me just start quickly with Astro's Playroom probably the most underrated launch game of all time i will say it is what it is just a bundle of joy it's super short but it's so so high quality like every second of that game is so high quality that i have no qualms about the length i think sony needs to give team asobi their unlimited you know carte blanche to do whatever they want and a high budget they need to do that yesterday because this team is incredibly talented and can convincingly make like a mario 
for PlayStation through Astrobot. I'm is it the same team that um yes did Astrobot Rescue Mission? Yeah, I think Astrobot's really going to turn into the PS5 mascot. I think they really are going to play that up this time because like during PS4, the look of Astrobot didn't make a whole lot of sense to me as like yeah. a mascot. It looks like what it felt like they were trying. Yeah, he he looks yeah. like a PS5. Yeah, or a, a more re more realistically, a PS5 looks like him. He came first. Yeah, no, and he's and, nowhere near as ugly. You know, you know that's. <laughs> It's true, but uh, you know, what's funny is the first time we kind of saw a hint of this design was with, I believe, PSVR itself. And Astrobot actually existed before PSVR. But really? it's interesting to think, yeah, because I think Astro had a demo game uh, with the PlayStation 4 as well, but it was nowhere near as, you know, uh, well-made or as robust as Astro's Playroom. But I, I've seen a lot. Astra's Playroom is probably what I've seen most out of the PS5, and I love the fan service in that game. Oh, it's it's done so well. It could have easily been cheesy and like, oh my god, this is just Play, PlayStation, you know, bragging. Yeah, I saw a little there. robot but it's so, from Devil May Cry, and that it's was the so cutest adorable. thing ever. Yeah, it's adorable. It's really clever. Like, these, it, and these developers make it seem like... This is why I compare it to Mario so much, because Mario is so, it seems effortlessly good and quality. I'm getting those same vibes from Astrobot now. It's yeah, just it, such it, a joy to play. And I think it reminds I like, me a lot of Mario Galaxy, too. Like, just it, it, the, yeah, uh, I agree. the water uh, in it looks very Galaxy-esque, and uh, really just the color choices in general. And I yeah. say that in pure praise, you know, that's not yes. plagiarism colors, sir. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the color palette is beautiful, and I think the thing about this game, obviously, just from a purely game design perspective, it's brilliant. The levels are really great, and so for people who don't know, Astro's Playroom, it's a free game with the PS5, and the, the whole premise is it takes place within your PS5, right? And there's four sort of uh, worlds you can explore in any order and they correspond to different components of your PS5. So there's uh, Memory Meadow, SSD Speedway, Cooling Springs, and GPU Jungle. GPU Jungle? That's really stupid. <laughs> and each of those four are divided into four levels. So th there's, like, you know, a respectable amount of game there, right? But the, the game itself and the levels themselves are so much fun and so high quality and remind me so much of Mario. But the thing Astro the thing that truly makes Astrobot special is that it highlights what in my opinion is the defining feature of the PlayStation 5, which is the DualSense controller. This thing is the real deal. Uh, there were a lot of impressions, you know, before the PS5 came out saying that, you know, like this thing is revolutionary, it's it's incredible, and you know, like obviously you can't really know for sure unless you try it yourself because like you know gaming journalists tend to get hyped and stuff and i, tend I to just want to point things. out i heard this was in a video about a mario update a mario 3d all-stars update but somebody was so happy that they were able to use their gamecube controller in super mario sunshine they said it's the best controller and then he said well until the dual sense yeah no i i, I, I feel insane. that way 100 percent i my favorite controller of all time was the gamecube controller uh, I've been very vocal about the fact that I've always thought Xbox had a better controller than PlayStation. That includes the DualShock 4. I thought, you know, Xbox's controller blows that thing out of the water. The easily. DualSense controller is the best controller I've ever held. Like, I, I hate holding my DualShock. Uh, I, I, think it, I think it was a downgrade from the PS3 DualShock, although I... I, I love the I, DualShock 4. The PS3 DualShock was yeah, kind of bad, I, I disagree with that. I think much, the huh? DualShock 4 is better than the Dual, DualShock no. 3, but... The dual sense blows everything out of the water. I'm telling you guys. I, I believe that. I've, I've strongly considered buying one for my PC. They've already uh, implemented Steam support for it. Yeah. Oh, have they? Really? So they yes. So I think it might be beta. Um, and I believe it technically has access to all the features because I think all the major features, all the major features except for the um, the trigger capacitative triggers. Is that what it's called? Uh, basically, yeah. Yeah, uh, every feature except that was already in the uh, Steam controller uh, to some extent. So, 
all the haptics and stuff. It's just no game's ever used it because it's the Steam controller, you know? How how good were the haptics in the Steam controller, though? Were they Extremely like... good. You could, um, okay. people went online, uh, there were people who used the Steam controller haptics to play music. Any song you've ever heard, or any sound you've ever heard come from a Steam controller is actually the haptics. That's really impressive. Yeah. But, you know, the so the dual sense is similar, right? So, like, when Astro's running, like, for example, on metal versus on glass versus on snow versus on sand, all of that feels different through your controller. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you never got any of that on the Steam controller, which was kind of disappointing, but not surprising. Uh, the Steam controller's haptics were used more to make it feel less terrible to rub your thumb along a trackpad. Uh -huh. okay. but, but the reason I bring that up is I'm hoping the DualSense, um, you know, games that come to PS5 and PC, I'd love to see them keep their DualSense support on PC. I think it's really exciting because developers, at least now, do seem excited about DualSense features, right? So I've played a host of first-party and third-party games at this point, and, you know, for games like, for example, Call of Duty uses the haptic so well. Each really? gun feels completely different. Each gun, based off its real life counterpart in real life, has a different level of resistivity for the trigger. As you're shooting the gun, you can feel the bullet exit the ch the bullets exit the chamber on your trigger finger. Like you can feel the tap tap That's tap. Huge. That is absolutely in, in huge. your finger. Uh, so it's just a whole new level of immersion, right? For the longest time, video games have had three components of immersion, right? We've had rumble for touch, visuals for you know visuals, and audio for hearing, right? And obviously visuals and audio have been prioritized for the longest time right well after basic rumble like no one really took that to the next level but with dual sense touch is now just as valid of a feeling in games as your your eyes and ears i don't argue nintendo huge. took it nintendo elevated it with hd rumble but they, they, okay to, so to they say elevated what you're saying it. It with it, HD Rumble, yeah, but it's like, nowhere that was close to the jump now we're seeing yeah. with, with these haptics. Uh, you know, so Call of Duty is just one example. Um, you know, like, and obviously, like, it's up to the developer to implement these features. I will say Assassin's Creed, barely anything. It basically just feels like I'm playing a regular game, which is a little disappointing. Well, Assassin's Creed's not really a next-gen game. It really isn't. Like, it's, it's a cross-gen game, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's far more in, it's, it's far more previous-gen than next-gen, in my opinion. Like... I, I've been playing it on my PC and I really like it, actually. Uh, you yeah, know, I'm, it I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's but I not. I will say. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. It's not not next gen game. It doesn't do anything groundbreaking at all. It's yeah. You know, a by the numbers Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, but just to wrap around again on Astrobot, the the haptics are best implemented in Astrobot, which makes sense. I think Sony really wanted an Astrobot to be a showcase for the Dual Sense. And I think, you know, like, especially now that this game's out and Astrobots has gotten great reviews and people are loving it too, just like it seems like everyone's playing it because it was free. I think this is setting up a Sobe team to, to, to be one of the next big players. And I really hope they get their shot. Because, you know, Astrobot Rescue Mission, it was great, but no one really has VR, right? Yeah, I uh, Astrobot Rescue Mission, playing it on your PS4 VR was the PSVR experience. I honestly can't think of another game. No, which I, is weird I because, pretty much um, agree with you. Yeah. The they, only other yeah. game I can think of is Resident Evil in VR, and that's for a totally different reason. It's not due to level design or anything, it's just due to the sheer elevation of the horror. I mean, yeah, Astrobot actually made me jealous that I couldn't track my controller when I'm in VR. Like, because it used that in such a clever way. Yeah, the, the minds over at Asobi are very innovative, and I'm very excited to see what they do. Yeah, and I haven't seen anything that interesting in that space, like, you know, outside of the indie space, since, like, the first Little Big Planet. Like, uh -huh. yeah, they're, they're doing incredible work. Yeah, I just want to give them the props where that's due, because I feel like they, they are definitely poised to be a huge name, I think, if they're given the right resources also a game and, taking place inside your console is like my favorite trope of all time you know you know like when i started i was like okay this is cheesy but like i loved it so much by the end you know like they just did it so well nah and, i love that in banjo nuts and bolts as well yeah. all the log box whatever yeah <laughs> but you know like after i cleared or like it took me five hours to platinum astro right so it's not a long game at all like i said but I still find myself going back to it just because it feels so good to play. I bet it ends up being a big speedrunner game. Yeah, there, there's a speedrun mode and everything. So it's definitely oh, wow. set up for that. Yep. 
and it, you know, like there's leaderboards between you and your friends and stuff, which is which gives the game a little bit of uh, longevity. So that's good. But you know, like after I 100%ed it, there came uh, a message came up and said, like you know, thank you for playing Astrobot Rescue Mission. Look forward to Team Asobi's next project. So hopefully they've already got something underway. Yeah, I hope so. so. And yes, I, I like if we get like an Astrobot 64 or Astrobot something, 64. you know, like, you know what I mean, like. Uh, so, some sort of like, better armed than the ones you know, from I guess triple A first party 3D platformer with Astrobot at the helm. Like, yeah, I that'd would be, be there, day that'd one. be ballsy because nobody's doing that right now except Nintendo, you know? Yeah, but like, I 100% think that Astrobot can go toe to toe with Mario, which is an absurd thing to say, you know? Like, Mario, like, I mean, even like a post Odyssey Mario, like. Is the move like surely the movement doesn't feel as good as Mario Odyssey? That would be no, no I yeah Mario Odyssey's movement feels better, better. But Astrobot's mu movement is nothing to sniff at either. It feels really good to play. But uh, yeah. So obviously Astrobot, huge, huge uh, ups for me, and a perfect showcase for that dual sets controller. It's one of those things that really I think. Like, I can sit here and talk about it, and obviously it sounds cool, but you really need to feel it to understand uh, what I'm saying, I think. Well, I'll just come on over sometime and try yeah. it out. Now, hey, that vaccine's that that vaccine that vaccine kind of <laughs> close, right? What? Vaccine's coming kind of Yeah, but you live five hours away yeah. now or whatever. Yeah, so. but I'll be in Morgantown, you know, like... And you'll have your PS5 with you. <laughs> Probably not, but... Yeah, anyway, yeah. Um... But, yeah, so I, I wanted to talk a little more about some of the other games I've been playing. That That's okay with you guys. Uh, go for it, yeah. That yeah, so... To earn it. I think the next I one the I have to mention is Demon's Souls. Definitely. So, Demon Souls Just is probably the most impressive next-gen title for me uh, right now. And, and honestly, probably... Other than Breath of the Wild, the best next-gen title, launch title, like, I've ever played, honestly. And that's probably, especially due to the fact that I've never played Demon's Souls before, this is a fresh Souls experience for me. And my god, is it hard. And I feel like, so, uh, this was the first Soul, Souls game, right? And so, in, in a lot of senses, it was like a prototype for what was to come. There are, like, no checkpoints in this game. And make, which makes it just brutally difficult. There's like, af only after you kill the boss of an area you get a checkpoint. Which is just wild to me. But... So that's it, even like worse than Mega Man, then. Like... Yeah, I mean like, each world is divided into several levels, right? And each time you beat a level, you get a checkpoint. Okay, like a bon so, the so like, how long is a level? I mean, the first time through, they're pretty... They can take anywhere from, like, 20 minutes to, like, an hour, I would say. Because there's a lot to explore. Like, it's still a Souls game, right? Like, yeah. there's still, like, winding pathways, connecting secrets, secret items any everywhere. Which, by the way, I want to add, have you guys heard about the door? No. So, apparently, there is a door behind an illusory wall in this game that was not in the original game. And, you know, Demon Souls veterans and, like, streamers and stuff have managed to uh, use photo mode to look behind that wall, and there's an item there. Uh, b behind the locked door, rather, and there's an item there. And so no one knows how to get into this door yet, and no one knows what that item is yet. That's but, so huge. I know, this is, this, this sort of thing is perfect for, like, a Souls game, right? Like, who knows what that is? Because, like, you know, if, if you're familiar with Demon Souls at all, you'll know that the world is divided into six arch stones, which teleport you to different parts of Boletaria. And those are like the different worlds in the game, right? But, you know, infamously, there's only five available in the game because From Software never finished development on the sixth arch, arch stone, but it's still there and it's still broken in the game. So some people are really hoping that maybe this leads to like repairing the sixth arch, arch stone and like Blue Point will have somehow built the sixth world with from yeah, software what, that maybe would when that, you buy the kind of when you buy the key dlc and yeah maybe maybe something like that or maybe it's a hint people are thinking it might be a hint to their next remake or something like that but either way this this sort of thing like 
it's it's it harkens back into a day when there could still be mysteries in games and i feel like that isn't really a thing anymore and it's super exciting because like everyone is like pulling all their resources resources online doing absolutely crazy things like one guy on reddit was like yeah i'm on new game plus seven and like i did this specific thing just to see if this door would open and it didn't and it was just like people were pulling out all the stops trying to open this door and still right now as of right now no one knows how to open the door or what's That's behind awesome. it someone tried I... to glitch into it but there's yeah. an invisible invisible box around the item so you wow. can't pick it up unless you go through the door so that's really exciting, I think. That reads a DLC, then. It could, or, or it could just be a fun Easter egg. I, I, really I hope it's a fun it's Easter egg. That would be way more fun. But the cynic in me says that if they put an invisible box around it, that's because they want to take money from you. But uh, then why would they put the? Why would they even put the item in if they were gonna? Yeah. Charge for it? So I don't know. Uh, some people have been speculating it's the saw cleaver from Bloodborne, just as a weapon you can use in Demon Souls, which that'd would be, be wild. That'd be wild. Yeah. What are yeah. the more implications? Yeah, oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited for the Vati Vidya videos. Oh yeah, I was, I was just about to mention Vati Vidya, and I was like, y y these people probably don't know who that is, but you do. Uh, yeah, he, I love his, that guy's channel, and he he's having a field day with Demon Souls as well. For I'm those that to don't watch know, Vati Vidya is a YouTuber who likes to cover the lore of the Souls games. And he just has the best voice to narrate Souls content. Like, Yeah, very I, forlorn. So, yeah, so appropriate but yeah like just sort of talking more on the visual side of things this game is such a looker you know it's it's a smooth 60 fps and just the level of fidelity and like the just quality of the assets just walking through this world feels so good and it, it it's one of the few things that truly feel next gen you know like astro felt next gen for the controller and by the way the, the haptic controller implementation in Demon Souls is absolutely insane. Uh, if you, you know, when you swing your sword often in Souls games, like, it clangs against a wall because corridors are tight, you can feel the metal clanging against the wall, and that feels different from when you attack an enemy and cut through flesh, You can, which sounds a little morbid, but, like, cutting through flesh feels different than cutting against metal. Why did you program me not to and, and just stuff like that, Dama you know, like... So, again, like, those haptics just taking that immersion to the next level. And, we, oh, by the way, one, uh, sorry, I just forgot to mention this, and I have to bring it up really quick. In Astro's Playroom, there's one level where it's raining, and you can feel each individual raindrop. Like, it's just so impressive. Like, as, like, Astro, like, pulls up an umbrella, and you can feel each raindrop hit the umbrella. It's just stupid, like, how, how insane that feeling is. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Because so, I forgot to mention, Demon Souls. Back on that, is the is the hub world as comfy on PS5 as it was on PS3? Because uh, uh, Demon Souls has always had my favorite hub world of all the Souls games. Yeah, I don't know if comfy is the right word, word, but like, I, do I love like the Nexus. Here. Yeah, the Nexus is really. I, I think it's really well done, and like. One's arm I, I, it just looks stone. fantastic. Like I'm sorry, but like I have to, I have to keep mentioning graphics. But this game just looks so good. Yeah, I don't know if comfy is the word I'd use, but it's definitely got that like mysterious on, Souls vibe to it. I remember when I was watching uh, Demon Souls play through in anticipation for Dark Souls. Yeah, that was like the standout for me was how good that like level was. was. So, okay, and then of course Firelink so doesn't still can't do it. You've you've seen all of Demon Souls then? Uh, no, I, I watched it probably the first three levels, maybe, and I know you can do the levels out of order, so. Right. I'm currently stuck on the Flame Lurker boss. I don't know if you guys know who that is. No idea. Also, but I watched this in 2011. Okay. But I will say another big thing I have to mention for this game, the score has been completely reworked, right? So the themes from the original are still present, but now it's been scored with a full orchestra rather than like MIDI. And it oh, just that's, that's sounds excellent. so good. Like, I the first time I walked in the Flame Lurker lair, and like the little cutscene for the boss like played, and he appeared, and his music started up. 
I felt such a rush of adrenaline. Like, I knew I was a dead man walking. But, like, it just felt so incredible. Like, all those things at once, the visuals, the, the music. Is moving away. Just Whatever knowing still haven't beat the this boss. Is, no, I haven't. The repository terminal <laughs> is still yeah. there. But the it's just, like, the first time I encountered him, I was like, this, I'm 100% going to die, and I'm just going to try and, like, figure out his moveset during this fight. And I was right, you know, like, I, I he, he wrecked me. But, um... Yeah, what an experience. This is exactly what I was expecting and exactly what I was looking for. And it's meeting, checking all my expectations. And I think it's got like a Metacritic score of like 92 on Metacritic, which is higher than the original Demon Souls. And I think that uh, in part is just, I want to give like a testament to how good Bluepoint is. Like Bluepoint is so good at their, at their game, which is like high quality remakes. Like they showed us before with Shadow of the Colossus. And they're showing this now again with Demon Souls that they're really the best in the business when it comes to remakes, I think. I have not played any of their remakes. But I believe you. Yeah. I I think uh you know, Toys for Bob gives them a run for their money, but Yeah, they're 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 good as well. I mean like I don't have an attachment to Crash. So wait no, they did Toys Spyro. for Bob with Spyro. Okay, the yeah, Insane yeah. Trilogy was alright too, I don't remember who made it, but I haven't finished that. Yeah, the, the Spyro remake was very good, but, you know, I think this this Demon Souls remake might be the best remake ever. Like, just in terms of the, the polish it got, like the visuals, the music, and the haptics now, as well. It's just so impressive on so many levels. Yeah. But, uh, that brings me to, I guess... The next game, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Oof. So, so obviously, like this will probably be the most popular PS5 game. You know, Spider-Man's a huge deal, yeah. and the game is really, really good. You know, like it's it's a it picks up directly it's after the story of Spider-Man on PS4. Power. And I the think in terms of next gen this right, the haptics are okay. You know, like not as good as Astro or Demon Souls. Like it's cool because like the resistivity has been altered on the triggers to feel like uh you know when spider-man shoots his web it feels like that i don't know how to describe that too well it's like it, there's like almost no resistivity until you reach the very end of the pool and then there's a like a little bit so it feels like that web shooting out um very hard to describe but it's there but again you know the haptics aren't as impressive as the other two games i mentioned but, you know, like, the story's great, and I'm I'm loving it so far. You know, like, Miles Morales, you know, obviously it's, you know, the same engine as the previous Spider-Man game. He plays a lot like Peter Parker, but he does have his own unique things, his own unique abilities, and even swinging through the city as Miles feels slightly different because he's got his own flair uh, when yeah. he swings. Yeah, I've, I've heard that his swinging feels better than Peter's I think it did. does. Yeah, I, I, I think it does. I'm not quite sure why, because I haven't played the original Spider-Man in a while, but, like, I remember it. You know, like, obviously the swinging in the original Spider-Man was fantastic, and part of the reason why that game was iconic. And But I do think this game, just based off of my impressions with it, has improved it slightly. See, I the more and more I hear about Miles Morales, the more I don't really think I'm going to pick it up, because, uh... I, the more I'm reminded of what I just didn't really love about uh, Spider-Man on the PS4. So, like, I think I'm probably going to pass on this one. Yeah, so what are you referring to? I, I It's hard to put my finger on it. I mean, obviously, the stealth sections that everybody hated. But, um, yeah. like, where you played as Miles no, and where you played as MJ. Yeah, but thankfully, that's not in Miles Morales. Yeah. It's just yes. Spider-Man throughout. Which, yeah, I those just, sections were bad. I agree. I don't know. It just didn't... Uh, I don't know. I just felt like Arkham, but not as good to me. I don't know. Uh, I, I was... I, yeah, I get that. I, I just think the I think the the biggest selling point to these games is just swinging through the city, and that yeah. feels so so good. And like, I feel like that's the core of what Spider-Man needs to be as a game. And if you nail that, you have a good Spider-Man game. Yeah, and I, I think... think it's a great Spider-Man game. But I I remember I went out and I bought a PS4 largely because I wanted to play Spider-Man. Yeah. And then I ended up playing Uncharted instead, because I just didn't care that much about Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, Spider-Man is a solid, like, 8, 8.5 out of 10, which is fine, you know, like, not every game is going to be a masterpiece. Like, yeah, on my, on my you, scale, it's like 6.5 or 7, probably, so that... 
Yeah. You know. If you if you ask me, like Demon Souls is a masterpiece, and I think a really? must play if you if you have a PS5. Would Absolutely. you say that about Astrobot too? Uh, yeah, Astro Astrobot's a must play. You have to play Astrobot if you get a PS5. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's no way I get a PS5 and I don't play Demon Souls. That would be insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Demon Souls and Astrobot. Yeah, they they make this launch for me for PlayStation. Like, they make it incredible. But yeah, just sort of getting back to Spider-Man, one thing I did want to mention in terms of next-gen features, and something I haven't really experienced until this game, is ray tracing, right? So ray tracing has been around for a while for, you know, high-end PC gamers, but this is yeah, really PC the first gamers. time we see it. Yeah, <laughs> this is really the first time we see it on console. And so it's basically the first time I've really experienced it, not through like a horrible YouTube video, right? Yeah, I feel like ray tracing is one of those things that like once it's been compressed for a YouTube video, it might as well not be there. Like... Exactly, yeah. Like it never really dawned on me how good this looked until I actually experienced it myself. And you know, like you made a really great comment in our in our chat earlier today, Connor, where you said like ray tracing is best in most games for cities, right? And I fully yeah. agree with that. Like the New York in Miles Morales with all of the windows reflecting their environment like perfectly looks absolutely stunning. Like the city in this game due to the ray tracing looks incredibly next gen to me. It looks like something that could not have been done before. And I'm excited to see that this is just the beginning, right? Like this is a launch game and the ray tracing already looks this good. And we already know that like developers get better at using these technologies throughout the gen. It just gets me so excited to see where yeah, I can't wait to see here. what Naughty Dog does with it. Yeah, my God, you know, like if Miles Morales can look this good with yeah, ray when tracing. they re-release The Last of Us Two with ray tracing oh, in a year, I can't yeah. wait. Well, that's when I'll finally play it, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to say about Miles Morales, and that kind of leads me into another point, and I think I'll move into COD from here. So again, you know, with PC features, right? Ray tracing. This is my first time experiencing ray tracing through PS5, right? Another first time experience for me was my first 120 FPS game. It's life changing, oh. isn't it? And it was unbelievable to me. Like I, you know, like, obviously I can tell the difference between 30 and 60, but I was always thinking like, okay, like, will Strange. I really notice the difference between 60 and it's 120? Gone. And I oh absolutely my God, yeah. did. Yeah. I absolutely 100% did. It intact. just feels like butter. Impossible. Like the smoothness Unless of the game can't really be described. Like was... you have to feel it. Yeah, I the the only reason I think it maybe was a, a weird call to put 120 FPS on a console is that 60 FPS isn't gonna feel good to you anymore. Like, I mean, it, it'll feel okay. Like, so I don't know. Like, maybe I'm just weird, but like just to like mess with myself, I guess. I played Call of Duty at 120, then went back to Spider Man at which was at 30 with ray tracing. Oh, yeah. And and it took like five minutes or so for it to not bother me but then my brain adjusted and i was fine again okay so hopefully yeah. yeah hopefully that's how i am and it doesn't like permanently affect me oh, right yeah i mean i definitely like non non-fast games I'll, I'll probably have ray tracing because you can turn on performance mode on miles morales right yeah miles morales has a rock solid 60 fps mode with no yeah uh, i tracing. when i play that game i'll probably enjoy like the the or uh the visuals for like half an hour or something and then turn them off and never think about it again because 30 fps in an action game is unplayable to me like no i totally get that I, and slower I, I games like... absolutely like if it was like assassin's creed valhalla is a pretty slow action game so i would probably be fine 30 fps on it but spider-man's so fast yeah and i i did dabble with the uh, 60 FPS mode and it feels incredible like I have to say but just the fact that this is my first experience with ray tracing I was like I have to just have that on maybe yeah. my mind will change later on into the generation but that's another great point to bring up Miles Morales is the only video game on PS5 I've played so far that has been 30 FPS everything is 60 plus which yeah. is huge to me like I didn't think we'd be here honestly like I thought but it's also know, the only one with um, ray tracing isn't it I so Call of Duty can have ray tracing, but that brings it down to sixty. Really, Call of Duty runs at sixty with ray tracing. That's impressive. Yeah, but you know, like, my impression of next gen, based on looking at the hardware that it's based on, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, is that you're either going to get, you know, 4K sixty, or 
uh, probably 30 FPS 4K with ray tracing. I think that's highly accurate. Yeah, I think yeah, you know, like, like and, and with Call of Duty, I do think it looks probably worse than uh, Modern Warfare did, like just graphically, and yeah. that may be in part due to the fact that they're devoting these extra resources to high frame rates or you know, like the ray tracing implementation. I don't know, but. You know, like, I don't really care. Like, just the feel of the game is so good It's at 120. Like, I'm excited. Like, I hear that uh, the Devil May Cry Special Edition will also have a 120 mode, and that Neo is getting a free next-gen upgrade as well, and it will also have 120, and that's super exciting to me. The only uh, thing, this is what kills me about these next-gen consoles, though. They're starting to introduce these options, and, like, my question is, could Miles Morales have run at 60 FPS at 1080p? Can you track it? Because, uh, like, why not? You know, like, he can run at 60 FPS at 4K. Well, with with ray tracing on, I mean. Oh, with ray tracing? Yeah, that's probably... Probably and could, honestly. That would have been what I would have picked. Like, I, I absolutely would pick 1080p you know, ray tracing it, it's, HDR 60 FPS. It's incredible that you bring that up. I think Devil May Cry Special Edition has one of these options. I think it has a 1080p ray tracing 120 FPS mode. I'm yeah, almost positive. That is, that's the, like... That's the thing that kills me about consoles is that, like, it, it's never really bothered me that much before because they haven't started to allow options at all. But now that they have these limited options, I'm like, well, like, you know, I value ray tracing and I value frame rate. I don't really care about resolution that much. Yeah, I think as we get these more advanced visual technologies, I think increasingly resolution is probably the least important one. Yeah, I agree. I mean, 4K... So when, I, when I'm sitting at my monitor and it's like 1080p or 1440, I'm right next to that and I see the difference. But right. when I'm sitting on my couch looking at my TV, and my TV is 65 inches, it's pretty big, but like I can see a difference between 1080p and 4K if I'm looking at a still image. But uh -huh. once, once I'm playing a game and there's motion, I'd much rather have those silky smooth frames than... Uh, than the extra pixels because i'm not going to notice those in movies. yeah and and perhaps as we get further into the generation we'll get some sort of dlss equivalent that will allow for you know ai upscaled resolution and then we have the ray tracing and we have the frame rates that would be the ideal scenario i think i would not count on that happening on consoles and uh I, I, because I, I want to talk about AMD's RDNA 2 cards that they, uh, we just got benchmarks today, and I'd like yeah. to talk about that in a minute, but, uh, I want you to finish up your PS4, or PS5 talk first. Sure, um, and, so just one final thing, when you mentioned options, right, uh, that, that brought my mind to, there are now, uh, in the PS5 menu options, there are system level wide settings for various games, right, so you can say, if you want the game to default to fidelity mode or performance mode in the system options, right? So you don't have to fiddle with it in the game. There are accessibility options in the system level menu as well. So like if you're colorblind or something, you can s set things for that in the system and that'll automatically apply in the game. You can set things for difficulty in the system and it'll apply in the game. You can set your preset to like very easy, easy, normal, very hard, you That's know, really hard cool. in, in the system and it'll apply in the game. And I think that is a really sort of intuitive move yeah, uh, like, because uh, that's awesome, because, like, me as somebody who knows games, like, if I had a kid and I'm giving them a, a PS5 to play, I don't want them to have to choose easy if I can do it for them and, like, right. them never see that option. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I think that was a really cool addition, and just, that's one of many, like, sort of UI tweaks that are really cool. Granted, like, using the UI, it took a little while for me to get used to simply coming off of PS4. Because on PS4, right, like you hold the, the PlayStation button and that brings up your like quick menu, right? And then you can like shut off the console and stuff from there. On PS5, it's pressing the PlayStation right, button. Right, and you have to hold it to bring up the, uh, you hold the, it for five seconds, I think, and it brings up the big menu. No, not five seconds. It's like one second. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's like, it's I, I had heard in a review that I watched that it was like much longer than it used to be, so. No, it's absolutely instantaneous. I have no idea what you're talking about. No, you, you um, no, you press it and it brings up the, the small menu, but if you hold it, it'll bring up the actual, like it'll take you to the whole menu. Right, but if you hold it for like a second, it okay. brings up the full menu. It's, it's super snappy and quick. That's one thing, another, another thing to mention about the PS5 menu versus the PS4 menu, which was extremely sluggish. Like it took like 
30 seconds for your trophy list to pop up or something like that, you know? Like, I have never checked my trophies, so I, I well, did not right. know that the PS4 menu was sluggish. Uh, the, yeah, PS4 the PS4 menu does feel sluggish. It sucks, honestly. but uh, PS5 menu so snappy, extremely snappy. And I guess that brings me to my last point for, for the next gen sort of features, which is the SSD, right? So we've heard a lot about the SSD and we've actually seen some interesting comparisons between, you know, Xbox's SSD, PlayStation's SSD, but I will say from what I've experienced, especially for first party games, right? Like COD and Assassin's Creed Valhalla are kind of slower, but still like eons, like leagues faster than last gen, right? But like talking about Miles Morales and Demon Souls and Astrobot, we're talking like, you know, sub five second, sub three second load times. It's just stupid. I, like, I just so fast. Sorry to interrupt you. I just tuned out for a second because I'm pretty sure this enemy just made a JoJo's reference, and I'm oh no, I'm way, recovering. Really? Yeah, I heard Yari Yari days, and I'm, I'm I'm out of it now. That's awesome. Yeah, I love JoJo. <laughs> I'm lost now. <laughs> but yeah, that's that, that's sort of uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Connor. The other thing I've noticed about this gen, uh, more on the UI side of things, is that like I think this is really going to be the gen of accessibility. Because uh, just firing, I, maybe this is an Ubisoft initiative, but like firing up Assassin's Creed Valhalla, immediately impressed. Like it gave me my like subtitle options and everything, all that before a moment of cutscene, before yes. a moment of gameplay, all I of that. Because because I'm so used to like firing up a game and immediately hitting the escape key to bring up my uh, options yes. menu. I will say, I think The Last of Us Part Two trail bit blazed that uh, feature, because ever since that game came out, I've been seeing more and more of that. Like, before the game even starts, set your accessibility stuff. Yeah. And obviously, you know, The Last of Us Part Two hailed for its insane accessibility options. I right? gotta wonder how much of an impact Game Maker's Toolkit had on that, because he's been championing that for, like, two years now. I think that, well, hopefully he had a big impact, because, like, I think this is, a, this is a great thing, you know? Like, obviously, yeah. it, like, it... I for I'd love to see a little more cooperation because Xbox has done some incredible things on that front too. Their adaptive controller. Oh yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Is that what it's called? The. Uh... I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Anyway, like, that thing. I hope you can plug that into a PS5 and use it because like. I hope PS5 makes. I don't think you will be able to plug an Xbox controller into PS5. I hope PS5 makes their own like adaptive DualSense controller. See, I because... think it would make. It would make so much more sense for them to collaborate on that, I think, because it's such a complicated thing to do and get right, and Xbox has done it so well. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I, it would be good, but I I doubt that they're gonna you, you can't make a, a dual... You can't make an adaptive dual sense because the thing itself doesn't really have any, like... Haptics or anything. Or buttons. Like, the, the adaptive controller is mostly just something you plug other peripherals into, I believe. And didn't it have, like, a huge... It had, like huge buttons, right? Maybe we're thinking of different things. I, I think it has some buttons. Yeah, it has huge buttons and stuff. But the key feature was that you could, for, for the first time, like people who needed special inputs could plug them into a console. Okay, yeah. It, I, it, I thought it was an actual, like... So it is an actual controller, but I didn't realize you could, like, plug other controllers into it. That's exciting. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. And, like, that was huge. That was a couple years ago. And it was also, like, super interesting. Like, you can open the box, like, with one finger or something. Like, they thought of everything on that thing. Yeah, and, and you know, like, I, I do think this is a very promising trend. We're seeing, you know, like, games before the game even begins show you your, your accessibility options. You can set it and go from there. For the people it doesn't affect, like us, like, you know, it's it's nothing. You know, you just, like... Just I mean, I'm not going to say it doesn't affect me. I'm turning those subtitles on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, subtitles towards the tower thing, core. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, like, that for, the, for the people that, you know, like... For the people that had no these expensive consoles and like struggled the because they couldn't set I'm these things out the gate, this is a huge deal, you know, like, oh, yeah. gaming is becoming just more and more inclusive of everyone, uh, you know, despite some attempts you from, you know, like, bigoted people for it not to be that way, but I do think overall we're trending in a good direction, which is really exciting. Yeah, I think it's interesting, because I do feel like Ubisoft is doing a lot of work in that direction, like, just from my limited time with Valhalla, which is interesting, because I don't think of Ubisoft as doing very many good things ever. You know, it's funny with Ubisoft, like, I, the trend I see with them is, like, one step forward, one step back, so they don't yeah. really go anywhere. But Yeah, yeah. and I'll, I'll talk about that in my games I've been playing, but, um... But yeah, yeah. that's... 
that sort of wraps up my PS5 spiel. I just wanted to touch on the next-gen features. I wanted to touch on the games because I think the games this time around are so incredible and yeah. set a really good cadence for what's to come. Because just a little every... bit of time to touch on it as we hit our 54th minute. I mean, there's a lot to say, you know? <laughs> but, you know, like, I, was, I will just say, if, if Sony maintains this momentum, I think, you know, like, especially with what they have scheduled for 2021... PlayStation's, PlayStation's going to be in an insanely good place. Uh, obviously, like I really doubt that God of War is actually going to make 2021, but we'll see. But yeah, so Connor, what did you want to bring to the table here? So, uh, I don't know how many PC gamer listeners we have, but we, we got anybody who's an AMD fan got dealt a pretty serious blow today. Uh, the benchmarks, like the third-party benchmarks for the 6800, 6800 XT came out today. And um, it's tough to recommend those cards to anybody at this point. That's uh, that's crazy. That's yeah. Uh, so we, like, like before in raw benchmarks, they pretty handily beat Nvidia. Like the 6800 beats the 3070, but of course it does. It's like 150 dollars more expensive. Uh huh. Not 150. It's it's more expensive considerably. Uh, and the 6800 XT beats the 3080. However, it's not by that much. Uh, in that case, the, the XT barely beats the 3080. And uh, once you turn on ray tracing, it's like half the frame rate. It's terrible in comparison to NVIDIA's offerings. And there's no DLSS equivalent <clears throat> right now. Allegedly, they're going to bring one later. But even with NVIDIA having DLSS off, NVIDIA's ray tracing is outperforming them. So do we... So and, this could be thing, my ig ignorance speaking, but do we think that like any of these issues could be ironed out through software? I think it's really unlikely. I think that their ray trace cores are just not as good as Nvidia's, and I do think that's going to affect consoles down the line. Uh, that's, yeah, that's think, unfortunate. I don't think you're going to get a good DLSS equivalent on consoles. I could be wrong, but I I just don't see it being likely right now because if it was. AMD has come out and said that they don't like DLSS. They called it not real 4K, and like, all right, sure, but that's not the point. Like, mm. yeah, they, they've, and if that's true, why are they working on an equivalent? I, I think it just says that they don't feel confident in what they're bringing to the table in that regard. And um, yeah, it's, that's really surprising to me from an outsider, like, you know, like, from my perspective, at least, you know, like I always saw Nvidia and AMD as like sort of the Sony Microsoft of the PC space. Oh no, right? it's never been like that. AMD has not been competitive since like the 7970, I don't think, and that was ages ago. Okay, yeah. So that that was over you know, eight years ago. I always got the sense that Nvidia, in terms of like GPU, was like the clear way to go, and I was always yeah. had my eye on that 3070. And just hearing that all of this sort of validates that decision. Like, yeah, it's just kind of about... surprising to me. I, I, you'd think that AMD would be going toe to toe with them. It's such a weird thing because, like, AMD, they released their 6800 card, right? It's only seventy dollars cheaper than their XT. So, like, why would you ever buy that? That's seventy dollars. But then, if you're looking at buying the XT for fifty dollars more, you could have a 3080. And like, in the grand scheme of things, that's not like fifty. It, it just does. I don't know who this is for. Like. I don't know why anyone would buy either of these over a 3070 or a 3080. Because they're worse for productivity, from what I saw. They straight up didn't work with a lot of the productivity tools that uh, Linus Tech Tips tried to do. They don't have as good a video encoding. Their video encoding is much worse. So if you're like a streamer or something like that, these, these cards are terrible for you. Yeah, that's really bad. They don't have NVIDIA's software, and NVIDIA's software is excellent in all regards, pretty much. Like. You know, you have the DLSS and all, that's cool, but NVIDIA is also, with their new cards, they have, like, AI background removal. If you're, like, a streamer or on a video call or something, it'll pick up your body and remove the background behind you. It has AI noise cancellation. Like, it just doesn't make sense to go AMD right now, and that oh my sucks. Gosh. I wanted to go AMD. I'm sorry, but I, I, that made me think of one other thing that I just have to mention, if that's okay. Oh, the audio on the PS5? Yeah, so the audio, so like the controller has a built-in mic now, and I thought that'd suck and be annoying, but it works incredibly well. 
like shockingly well. Obviously, like the voice quality isn't going to be as good as if you have like a dedicated headset. But, no, I, but I hate playing a game that needs a headset with a bunch of people that don't have one. So having a mic in that controller is such a good thing. And, and, but here's the shocking thing to me. So obviously they use some sort of AI sound technology as well because it only picks up your voice. Like it yeah. doesn't pick up your game. It doesn't pick up the controller haptics. It only picks up your voice. And not only that, That's your stop. Your, the, the party member's voice sounds so clear through the controller. And I was just shocked. Oh, like your I party member's voices come out of the controller? Geo yes. That's cool. Yeah, so the party members, yeah, everyone in your party, the voice chat comes from the controller speaker. And you can change that through the audio settings if you want. But, like, I, I totally thought this feature would suck, and it really doesn't. Which is no, just I, a, another plus to this already stellar controller. But, okay, I am sorry such a proponent hijack. of that, because I have so many friends who've, like, broken their mic or something. Like, I was trying to play video games with one of my friends the other day. I'm not going to name and shame, but like, <laughs> I was excited, I got all set up, and we started playing the game, and he said, oh, my mic's broke, so we're just, and I'm like, why am I even playing this? We can't yeah, that, and, the and point? you know, it's funny, that's been such a common problem for like over a decade now, ever since multiplayer gaming really became a thing, you know, like, a mic was required, and those things break, you know, like, and this is such a, such a simple but effective solution to that, like, if you're, if you don't have a mic, doesn't matter anymore. You can yeah. talk to your friends just fine through the controller, and you don't have to like get up close to the controller or anything. You're just holding it, playing it as usual, and just talking. It's kind of yeah. magic. It's, it's really cool. Okay, sorry to hijack that. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, that you... That's fine. I'm pretty much done uh, with my with my talk. It's pretty much just like the only reason to buy an AMD card right now is because they're probably going to be easier to get your hands on because they're also not as good for cryptocurrency mining as Nvidia's right now. Yeah, that's Last kind of a sh that's kind of a shame to hear. I wonder, you know, like it's just hard for me to really uh, I I have to think AMD's got to do something right. There's got to I mean, be okay, some sort so of they they software. have done they've yeah. done one thing right and that's that's the gamer who thinks ray tracing is a meme and doesn't trust DLSS. Yeah. If you are that gamer then AMD is ahead right now and a little bit cheaper. That 6800 XT looks really nice right about now. I guess, but like, but I, I don't know. Tracing if anyone nice. who thinks eyes and doesn't, you know, anyone who look, looks with their eyes and doesn't have weird biases is going to see the obvious. Well, there, there are a lot of people who don't like DLSS and would pick frame rate over ray tracing, and that person. But, okay, so maybe, because that just sounds ludicrous to me. Can you explain to me why you wouldn't like DLSS? A lot of people just don't like 4K upscaling. They want an authentic 4K image. And DLSS has okay. been imperfect in a couple of games. So that that sounds like the same sort of argument to me that like uh, checkerboard rendering had, you know, with PS4, Xbox One. Like, It is. It's the exact Unless same. you're some dude from Digital Foundry, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between a checkerboard 4K and an actual 4K image. Like, come okay, on. Okay, I would have agreed with you until recently. But the fact is, when I'm sitting looking at my TV, I can't tell the difference between 1080p and 4K, like, by eye. Yeah. So, like, the people who care about 4K can probably tell. Like, if I'm sitting at my 4K monitor sitting in front of me, I'll okay, probably... Okay, yeah, at, at a monitor, me, but, like, especially at a TV. Yeah, know. but a lot of PC gamers aren't playing on the TV, they're playing on a monitor. True, true. Yeah, I, I still think it's a little silly. I feel like it's so close that it probably shouldn't matter, but, you know, like, we're, we're in the hyper-nerdy space now, like, so anything really goes. Yeah, yeah, once you're looking at the 6800 XT and the 3080, you're definitely not at... There are no casuals that are going to be playing. Exactly, yeah. But I, I really just can't... I would have trouble recommending... AMD at all right now, which sucks because I was rough, yeah. the team red being on top again. But that just doesn't seem to be the case. And I got, I got, uh, I got duped. I, I was like looking for Linus Tech Tips. That's where I get most of my benchmarks from. And I was like excited to see it. And it, the, the title of his video was AMD didn't disappoint. And they didn't disappoint you, maybe, but like. They, Wait, why, why did he say that though? Like, was he sad? Because they they made good on every promise they made. They beat Nvidia. If you don't turn on ray tracing. Yeah. 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 I don't know. That's. Uh, I guess that's kind of like. That was the only way they could say they did that. I don't know. Yeah. And then there's still the fact that the 6900 is coming out $500 cheaper than a 3090 with similar performance. That card actually it justifies its existence probably. If you don't like ray tracing. 
But who who's really gonna spend a thousand dollars on a yeah, graphics? Yeah, exactly. Card that's that's racing? like just... even like out of the hardcore. That's like the hardcore of the hardcore. You know? Yeah, it's just kind of crazy. I mean, you're you're probably gonna get okay performance with ray tracing on a, on a 6900. But I I just I don't know. I will not be getting an Android card, and that is kind of a bummer. And I will be sit around and wait for my search for a 3070 for to complete my PC build. Yeah, I hear January maybe we'll be able to. <clears throat> right, I'm looking for a 3080, but I hear that's, January. I feel like that's gonna be even tougher to get. Maybe. Maybe we'll see. But yeah, like I doubt I, it. Cause I, scalpers I, I, don't have a, Scalpers can buy a lot more 3070s. They can probably true. make a bigger profit off of those. But all but, things considered, you know, I think it's a super exciting time to be a gamer. We're in, we're in next gen ter we're firmly in next gen territory now for both the console and the PC space. Yeah. <laughs> And it's really delivering, you know, like the jet, the the jump from, you know, the PS3 360 gen to the PS4 Xbox One gen, it was cool and all, but it, like, <clears throat> it didn't even come close to matching the jump between PS2 to PS3 and Xbox to 360, right? Yeah. And I think this jump comes a lot, lot closer to that, you know, like with everything from the advanced visual technologies like ray tracing, high frame rates, to uh, the utilization of SSDs to make everything feel snappy and smooth, I th I, uh, and you know, like games coming out right out of the gate to take advantage of, the, uh, of those features, and especially on PlayStation's end, the usage of haptics to really uh, amp up the sensation of touch to kind of be on par with you know visuals and sound. I think yeah, it's a I've... super exciting time to be into video games. I think on the PlayStation end for sure, and, and on PC because PC cares about graphics above all else essentially. Right. Uh, and VR is making some big leaps right now too, but I'm not going to get into that. But um, I, I I really think PlayStation is the one that feels most next gen right now because all my friends that have Xboxes are like, yeah, I'll be getting a Series X, you know, but I'll get it when I get it. I don't know anybody who's like chomping at the bit, like yeah. scouring stores. <clears throat> For and, an know, Xbox. Like, and just anecdotally, like, people are going nuts for the PS5 from what I've seen. Like, like everywhere it becomes available, it sells out instantly. And, like, friends are messaging me and being like, hey, where do I get a PS5? And these are friends that I normally don't talk to, but they know that I'm into video games. And, like, yeah. it seems like it's capturing the zeitgeist. Maybe not as much. I mean, definitely not as much as, like, the Wii or something like that. But, like, it, it's, it's, it's got the public's attention, I think. Yeah. See, I'm like laughing at myself because I'm really excited to build my new PC. That's my big next gen thing. And I was like joking with my family the other day because I'm not going to be able to go home for Christmas because of COVID. Right. That uh, I'm going to get a Christmas tree and wrap all my individual PC components to put under it. <laughs> oh, God. What a build nerd. a Christmas morning. But I won't be able to get a 3080. Yay. Yeah, so it's all pointless. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean. I don't know. There are a lot of components that'll be a huge upgrade in this PC. I'll probably just move my 1070 over for now. My 1070 yeah. is no slouch. No, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. But and uh, that's that's about 1070 is about a par with like a Series S, right? Uh, it's probably a little better than a Series S. I think. I think. I don't know. I think I'm pretty close to a One X. Yeah. Which beats a Series S. Yeah, which is still really bizarre to me. I feel like yeah. that's that maybe a misstep on Microsoft's part. Incidentally, have you? We didn't. We we talked a bit about Series X, but haven't really mentioned Series S. Do you know anyone who's gotten a Series S? No, I don't know. I don't. I'm yeah. not gonna know anybody who gets a Series S. I I just want to say, I feel like our social circles might be not interested in that console. Buying a Series S, like, I could see it being attractive. It's two hundred dollars cheaper. But I think if you do any research at all, you'd have to be out of your mind to buy a Series S. And I, I was a big proponent of Series S. I thought like, hey, 200 bucks cheaper, 1440p, that'd be good enough for me. But mm, I, I don't know if I agree with that necessarily. I think if, if you're, you know, like maybe a parent or maybe a super casual gamer, you get a Series S, you get Game Pass, you're set. You know? And then you get one game and you build up your hard drive. Like, <laughs> it, or your solid state, sorry. Yeah, but, but like, like, do casual gamers play more than one game at a time? I don't know. No. They play Call of Duty and they play FIFA, and they're not going to have room for both of those. How big's the hard drive? Uh, 512 gigs. You can have, that's enough room for COD and FIFA. No, Come it's on. not. COD is 280 gigs. 512 does not account for the OS, so that's room for COD. <laughs> 
So, okay, so the funny thing is, COD did say 280 on the box, but it's like more like 140 when it's actually in my PS5, so I have no idea what it was talking. Maybe it included Warzone in that number? Maybe. But yeah, but still, like, you know, that, uh, just commenting on that briefly, that is just absurd. Like, there's no way on Earth COD should be close to 300 gigabytes. No, there's no, there's no not. way. But I'm really saying, like, I, I don't see... It's two hundred dollars to upgrade the storage in an Xbox Series X in an Xbox Series right now. Yeah, that's kind of w weird to me. Like, and, and that's so well, at least strange. You can't too. do it. You can't do it at all on a PS5. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Like, PS5 will accept like third-party memory upgrade, like uh, hard uh, solid-state upgrades, right? It has an M2 slot. No. Yeah, they will. Uh, there's nothing on the market that it'll accept right now. No, 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 yeah, no, not right now, right? But it has an M2 slot, right? And when, you know, like, when uh, PlayStation certifies, you know, SSDs oh, yeah. that are on par or better with the PS5 SSD, you can conceivably slot that SSD in no matter where it is, like, where you got it from or, you know, what have right. you. With Microsoft, you have proprietary expansion, which is really weird to me because, you know, What's I would expect it's proprietary Sony expansion. to do that. It's because proprietary like expansion, yeah, yeah. but it looks like they're not going to be the only ones making it. How does that make any sense? They, they, uh, it's just like GameCube memory cards. There are off-brand ones that you okay. can get. Uh, I love so, the like, off-brand ones. I still don't understand. Why didn't they just do what PlayStation's doing? Like, that, I, that I don't makes know. more sense to me. Uh, I mean, maybe they think Americans are dumb, and they don't trust them to install an M2, it's a little involved. I wouldn't expect so, uh, a, the average person to be able to do a PS5 M2 install. Yeah, I guess you're right. That that does seem like a step above just like, you know, like... And maybe they're banking someone... on the price going way down. You know, economy of, uh... What's it? What's be... it? When you scale? sell a lot of stuff. Economy of scale, I think. Yeah, thank you. I remember yeah, I my know. econ courses in college. <laughs> I didn't just... take any. It's just a sort of weird choice, but you know. Yeah, like... it is. But I, I really just like. I, I really don't think. And like, the, if you want, if you're like somebody who doesn't want to spend a bunch of money, then get uh, Xbox All Access. Like, I think I, I don't get why they made the Series S because Xbox All Access totally opens the door for it to be an impulse buy. And. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think from Xbox's perspective, they really were just trying to capture two markets, right? The hardcore market and the casual market, and they made a console for each. In in their yeah. minds, I think that's what they were doing. Maybe. I, and, I just, you know, marketing-wise, you know... Mindset. I've said that before, but... It, well, you, you know, like, I, I, I kind of agree with you. I think I'm more sold on the Series S as a concept than you are, but I do think that, like... I think Xbox marketing is really going to go into full force, like Microsoft marketing, and really sell Series S to, like, you know, regular families that don't listen to this nerdy show. Maybe. I, I definitely... This is anecdotal as well, but I have heard... You can scan it for the missing... Anecdotally, again, that the Series S is still in stock everywhere. Really? Yeah. Yeah, nobody so cares. I, I, nobody I did buying. hear that... that makes sense. Yes. Nobody, Series nobody X. in that casual demographic was itching to buy a next-gen console on launch right. either. Been asking for I mean, I have heard time. anecdotally that Series X and PS5 is sold out everywhere. It's like yeah. impossible to get one of those things. Yeah. Uh, which, you yeah, always an exciting time, technique. I think. This, yeah, I, you know, that's like the one time I'm happy to live in Morgantown. Because I can drive to some, like, small town's Target and pick up, like, right, whatever's yeah. impossible to get a hold of. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I've done that a few times. I I remember when the actually in Morgantown the when the SNES and NES classics were impossible to get a hold of, they were always in stock in the Target in Morgantown. Yeah. Yeah. Perks of living in a small town. Yes. Yeah. We will work with any but, uh, I I think we're ready to move over to games. Plan. I think yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. I, I think we skipped time. Amid this week. Uh, yeah. I've given you everything. So. Uh, do you want to go first, Mike, or me? Uh, sure. I could talk more about Ghost Runner because I gave it the first two levels impressions last time. And the game has completely changed since then. I believe that. Like, I, I like the first two levels. I played that demo after game. you praised you, it so much. Yeah, you finally get, like, abilities. Like, I just got a new one right now. 
Yeah, I was watching your boss fight, and that looked incredibly sick. Oh, it was. Uh, I'm gonna level with you guys. I haven't had the stream up this whole time because it distracts me too much. Yikes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been I've been paying attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm paying gonna... attention. That's all that matters. Yeah. But the game, it's like a, it's almost a puzzle game, less than a slasher. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely I get that vibe. vibe. Yeah. Okay. I just had to like think the entire time. Like if something doesn't work, I reevaluate it and then walk back in. Which honestly, yeah, I it... like. Yeah, I like action puzzlers. I, uh, I actually, this isn't my game I've been playing, but I picked up Manifold Garden and played it for almost an hour. And loved the visuals, thought the puzzles were interesting, but I just don't like those slow-paced puzzle games like that. So I, which is disappointing because I thought the visuals, I was super excited to be looking at them for a couple hours, but or however long it took to beat the game. But those action puzzles, like in uh, Ghost Ghost Runner, yeah, yeah, they're very fun to me. Like it, it, super hot level stuff, you know. Yeah, it feels very similar to Super Hot. Yeah. In terms of the way you like That's tackle a really level. good comparison. Oh, yeah. Elena? Your people. Not super Your people. Was good. Uh, yeah. We didn't know actually what it was. Actually, super hot. Just heard the voice. Yeah, it's really fun. Uh, the DLC they made for it was like really boring and terrible. Oh, I heard. Uh, wasn't it a standalone? It's dead now. Yeah, Very you got it for dead. free if you bought Super Hot, but it was called Mind Control Delete, and it's not. I got it for free and paid too much. It was just a total waste of my time. I heard it was. A after having, and it was also, I heard it was really pretentious. I didn't get far enough to see any of that, but <laughs> which is weird because typically I would call that a good thing. I like pretentious games, but nah, wasn't into it. Ghost yeah. Runner looks good. Though. Ghost Runner's a lot. Of fun. So it, it came out of early access, right? No, Ghost Runner. No, was it there ever was a demo. Early it was a demo. Okay. Okay. This okay. was a full release game on launch, <clears throat> which is kind of rare. <laughs> yeah, for... sad that that's such a thing you can brag about now. <laughs> that's kind of rare yeah. now. This is a fully finished product. Yeah. It it doesn't even <laughs> crash a dozen times. Yeah, it doesn't crash. Looking at you, COD. Doesn't yeah. like explode. Multi-billion-dollar Activision. The soundtrack's banging. How's the story? The story was really weak in that demo. Uh, well, it's kind of the Dude, background. Dude, you're, you're a cyborg ninja running around cutting off heads. What do you think the story is going to be? The story kind of oh, no. lies in the background. <clears throat> That's good. That, that was really what I wanted was that the story took less of a precedent because I felt like half the demo was me climbing a tower and like very samey gameplay while a guy told me a story I didn't care about. Oh yeah, no, that's <laughs> the first two levels are all exposition. And then, and then it just kinda it kinda builds up past that. That's good. Like, I like that dialogue does not repeat if you keep dying. So for a given section, as long as you get through like someone saying a sentence, that that's sentence so will good. never be said again, even if you die. <laughs> that is so good. That's really good. It's really great because you can hear a whole story <clears> in the time <throat> it takes you to get through a section. <laughs> and then you're just jamming into the soundtrack. So it's it's very clearly a game where you're gonna die a bunch of times. Oh no, just... you definitely die a lot. Yeah, I think the first boss fight, which is this giant laser tower, which I could just pull up actually. I don't want to complete it because it was a pain, but it took me two hundred some deaths. Yeah. So now that you've you died two hundred times to the same boss, you're in the right mindset to try. The Souls games out. Looking for you. <laughs> this one had laser walls, though. It was muscle memory Wait, Mike, at that you point. Not the Souls games? I have not played a Souls game. Wow. Relax. Okay. Yeah, you know, like, it's funny, just kind of speaking of that a little bit, it's it's funny, like, we, we see the Souls games, obviously, as, like, some sort of, like, you know, pinnacle of game design, like, they're huge, big deals, but, like, to a lot of people, they've never touched one of these things. Like, so, like, yes, there's they're popular, but, like, in the grand scheme of things, they come nowhere close to something like COD or even Spider-Man in terms of popularity, I think. Yeah. Uh, like, I was talking to my, one of my sort of casual friends, right, I mentioned, uh, he contacted me asking about, like, a PS5, and he doesn't really game too much, right? Yeah. But I mentioned Demon Souls, and he was like, oh, what's that? And I was like, oh, it's like Dark Souls, and he was like, oh, what's that? Like, oh, what's like, oh, Dark Souls? Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Some of us, some of us, there's still people who haven't been tainted by, by the memes. Yeah. The innocent few. Uh, so if you're ready, I'm gonna move on to mine now, Mike. Yeah, you're- go ahead. Uh, I... 
I'm not really gonna talk about one game. Uh, I'm gonna talk about Ubi, Ubi Play Plus. I think it's called. It's whatever. It's the subscription service where you get all of Ubisoft games for. So game, game Pass for Ubisoft, basically. Yeah, it's 15 bucks a month. I, I'm not gonna renew my subscription. I bought it mostly to play Watch Dogs Legion, uh, which, which I. Which hasn't been received too hot, right? Like to no, uh, not by me either. Uh, yeah, that so game. I, I think part of it is that the performance isn't very good, which makes it difficult for me to sit through knowing I'm going to have a new PC soon. Uh, but yeah, it runs really bad. And honestly, like, it's really easy. And Watch Dogs 2 wasn't hard at any point. But Watch Dogs Legion is like... Kind of bad? I don't get it. Like, it's yeah. so stupidly yeah, easy that I'm not having fun. Like... You know, it's, it's, it's tough, because, like, I feel like with Watch Dogs, like, there's so much potential there, but I feel like Ubisoft never really realized the potential that I think. It's know? seriously bad. Like, I'm maybe five or six hours into the game, so, like, I'm not in baby easy mode anymore, or I shouldn't be. But, like, in Watch Dogs 2, I felt like I was really cool and did really well if I could finish a mission without ever stepping foot on the premises. Like, if I was able to, like, hack my way through everything yeah. and never actually go in. In oh, yeah. Watch Dogs Legion, I feel like an idiot if I did have to do that. Like, because, like, there are oh, so no. many missions where, like, like, some computers and stuff you need to physically interact with, which means either you get your character or a spider drone to that thing. And so many of those missions have a spider drone sitting next to the computer already, and you can just like hack that and then you're done. Like you didn't do anything. That's it's lame. so common. And there's like all these missions where the, <clears throat> they act like the challenge is like you need to get to the roof. But one of the first things they make you do is recruit a construction okay, worker and construction workers home. can summon a construction drone that you just climb on top of and ride to the roof. Like, I feel like if you're actually engaging with any of the systems in this game, then you have optimized the fun out of it already. Like. I'm thinking maybe if I just stopped doing that and played it as a shooter, I'd have more fun, but I don't know. And it's that also totally like, defeats the purpose of Watch Dogs. That, that gets yeah, that defeats the purpose of Watch Dogs. Like, I feel like they also super such. defeat the purpose of having the recruitment system because there are special missions that are always yeah, available to you that end with recruiting a Go. super character that's like better than somebody you can just find on the street. So why would I ever recruit people I just find on the street? Mm. You ask. Well, there's permadeath in the game, which I have turned right. on because I wanted to increase the difficulty a little bit. <coughs> I've lost one Wait, character. It's not. You have to turn it on. I thought that was yeah, just permadeath the is not setting. on by default. No. What? That was the whole premise of the what they showed us. Like your yeah. character dies and it switches to another one. That, that happens, but because they, they go to the hospital for a while or they get arrested for a while, uh, if you have permadeath off. But uh, I have permadeath okay. on. I have lost one character. <laughs> And it was not to the game. It was because I was goofing around and accidentally dropped a box on them from a construction drone. Okay. I have never had a, I have never lost a mission. And that didn't even count as a loss. It just put me in a new character and then the mission ended. And I oh, was yeah. given a success. Like, it's just not, How do I it's it? so close First, to being really fun, be I feel like, but like, I don't know. There was all this fun stuff you could do in Watch Dogs 2, where you, like, unlocked these new cool hacks and stuff. And in Watch Dogs Legion, those hacks are still there, but they're individual to a recruit. But what that means is, overall, you just feel way less powerful. And as a result of you being less powerful, everything's easier, because they can't count on you having any one ability, I guess. I don't know, it's just lame. It's super lame. And I almost feel like the only way I'm gonna enjoy this game is by playing as the worst characters, which are also the least fun because they don't have the cool stuff. I don't know. Have you played as the grandma yet? What? The grandma, have you played, played as the grandma yeah, yet? Yeah, I've played as the sure. grandma, and it's just kinda, I don't know. The novelty's there, but it's stupid. Like, <laughs> I, I saw a couple of characters walking <laughs> that had like, Sonic flatulence or something, and like the downside is that they would be noticed really easily when you're trying to be stealthy. Keep moving. Okay. And there, there are a few missions where I've had fun. It's just that there have been so many missions where these uh, these blunders have been so frequent that like, I don't know, they outweigh it. Especially when I'm doing like what I'm doing, which is renting the game. 
it, it yeah. makes me like really notice every flaw as like you know I'm not gonna not gonna rent this game again. Mm-hmm. However, that said, uh, I would recommend Ubisoft Plus if you like Ubisoft games because I was able to drop Watch Dogs, and for my same $15, I'm playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I like a lot. Like, yeah. it's not you know it's not an incredible game. I'd have never paid $60 for it. I'd have felt incredibly ripped off if I did that. It's but, like, it's, it's comfort food in, in my opinion. Yeah, it's absolutely something you sit back. It's, it's like a movie that you don't care about, you know? You just put it on in the background almost and turn your mind off and yeah. watch the movie play. The combat's yeah. nothing spectacular, but it's engaging enough that, like, you know, I'm not watching it happen. I'm helping, at least. Exactly, yeah. And I, I, I do find the whole premise of Vikings pretty cool. I do find that cool. Uh, I will move into games I've been playing in Valhalla now. I like Valhalla. I think my main issue with it is that the traditional Assassin's Creed mechanics uh, there's a lot of Ludo narrative dissonance there. Like, I like the stealth and stuff in Assassin's Creed games well enough. Are you okay? And it feels good yeah. for my the, liking to use Exactly. Them. The Assassin. So I'm about. I, I think I said like nine hours in or so, eight hours in. I think we're at about the same place then. Yeah. The, nine the Assassin stuff really just feels sort of tacked on right now. And obviously, yeah, we're I, still early into the game, so that could change, but it's just like, just make a Viking game. It doesn't have to be an Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, please. Yeah, and I, I felt like for a bit, like, maybe Eivor was going to go through some critical character development that was going to make him more comfortable, and, and as a result, me more comfortable with the Assassin stuff, and that's that's just not happening. And yeah. it's also, frankly, it's harder to do the Assassin stuff than it is to do to just haul in a raid and destroy the town entirely yeah. instead of looking for your target. No, I'm, I'm absolutely playing more as a Viking than I am an assassin. Like, yeah, me too. It just feels fine. way more appropriate. Yeah. It, it's a fun game doing that in. It just feels kind of weird. Like, like when Sigurd, your um, yeah. basically like your brother slash best friend guy that you go on missions with. At the beginning of a mission, he always says something like, uh, all right, we can stealth this or we can Viking this. You know, whatever you want to do. And and I think at one point. He almost literally said that, and I was like, Seeger, you know me better than that. <laughs> Seeger, you know. Seeger, you just got back from, like, raiding and pillaging all across England. Like, what? Yeah, what do you, what do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> that's okay, because it, it's a better game than Watch Dogs Legion so far. It also, I, I heard you saying that the game was fairly poorly optimized and stuff, but, like, for, maybe for, that's for true. Series X. It, yeah, it's, okay. it runs buttery smooth on PS5. It's Based running on. extremely well on my PC, and that's, that's like, like I, I was hesitant after you told me that, and I like turned on like adaptive resolution and stuff, and I don't think, I think occasionally my resolution dips, which I love that feature in PC games, it's not there often enough, I would so much rather my resolution dip than my frame rate. Yes, uh, but, and, um, and to just sort of clarify my comments from before a bit, uh, when we were talking in private. Uh, I was strictly talking PS5 and Series X versions of the game. I I didn't know anything about the PC version. It runs extremely well on my PC, and I'm very happy with it. And That's I good. got... I don't know if I'm going to finish it, but I got some good entertainment out of it. I will probably revisit Watch Dogs Legion on the show once I have my new PC built, because all... And uh, you probably will too, because all uh, 3000 series cards are being bundled with Watch Dogs Legion uh, <laughs> for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Which is how I got my copy of Watch Dogs 2 as well. Here's the thing, though, like, uh, I hear that even on the 3090, with all the bells and whistles turned on, Watch Dogs does not perform well. Yeah, I've yeah, heard it but, is not yeah. great on the performance front. Well, that's those are with DLSS off, typically. When when people run those all bells and whistles uh, benchmarks, they typically disable yeah. DLSS. Okay. And so I imagine you can get an extremely... If I... <laughs> I bet I can turn on DLSS and upscale 1080p to 1440p and have all the bells and whistles on and have a very good time. Yeah. And barring that, I can upscale 720p to 1080p and not care and just play it on right. the TV. <laughs> like, I, I really think I'm going to have a... I, I don't know. I want to give that game a second chance, but right now it is... The performance is what tips it over the edge into not being worth my time right now. Yeah. Yeah, and again, like I will, I will say, like I always wanted Watch Dogs to be more than it is, because I really do feel like it has untapped potential, but it doesn't really seem like Ubisoft is. I, yeah, I would love for an almost Deus Ex level Watch Dogs game, because it, it really does have immersive sim elements, and it just wastes them. Like, <laughs> I like I yeah, the hacking stuff is super fun. It, it, 
it, it could be a lot more. Like, because I, I feel like they've fixed the problem I had in Watch Dogs 2, where it felt terrible to kill people because it felt like something the characters wouldn't do by introducing characters that absolutely would kill. Like, they don't have a problem with it. Uh, because, you know, you can play as whoever you want now. The, the problem is now, I feel no urge to kill anybody because it's so easy not to. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just don't... I don't know. They're... It, playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla and then playing Watch Dogs Legion, it is unbelievable to think that they came from the same company. Because Legion is polished to a mirror... Or no. Assassin's Valhalla is Creed polished to polished. a mirror scene. And Watch yeah. Dogs feels like an early access game. But here's the thing, you know, Ubisoft is so big, it's basically yeah. like, they might as well have been different studios working on it, you know? Like and they, I do they, kinda think it's Ubisoft insane. consists of like, a dozen plus studios at this point, I think? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I just wish Watch Dogs got a little more love, because I want that series to be good. I, I honestly am thinking about just going back and playing Watch Dogs 1. It didn't receive terribly good reviews, but I, I have a feeling I'll like it more than Legion. Yeah, I think 2 is the best of the 3. 2 is the best, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Which is sad. Because 2 was just, 2 was just good. 2, it was, wasn't two was just good, yeah. In my, yeah, in my opinion. I think Mike was more warm on it. But... I, I was pretty warm on it. Uh, good, you know, getting me to call a game good isn't easy. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I was disappointed. I think I've said on the podcast before that Legion was going to be a day one buy, and I'm really yeah. glad that I didn't do that, because <laughs> I would have... Yeah, that's why, like, unless you, I don't know, in general, unless, like, I know, like, unless it's, like, a Naughty Dog game or, like, a, uh, or a FromSoft game or something like that, you know, like, I always, like, check or reviews. Doom. Yeah. Well, I haven't really played Doom, but Doom is one of those for sure as well. But, you know, like, unless it's a game you know is going to be quality from people you know who are good at making games it's it's always better to just see impressions yeah but all right i think yeah i think that's gonna do it for us this week i do Very... i do want to say if you like ubisoft games i didn't even know ubi play plus existed if you like ubisoft like if you like assassin's creed i don't i i'm not in love with assassin's creed but i have toyed with the idea of getting origins and odyssey and now i have them both as well as valhalla like ubi play plus is an extremely good value if you like those games yeah and i will say maybe especially like after valhalla you know like valhalla's like comfort food odyssey and origins might feel like junk food honestly it's just oh, really more more of the same <laughs> i thought, I thought it wouldn't feel as bad to do the assassination stuff in those maybe no it feels uh, i think it feels worse in origins in well in origins at least tonally it feels more appropriate odyssey it makes no sense you're like a you know you're like a athenian warrior but Mm. But yeah. Well, that's All that right. for me. Yeah. Okay. So wrapping up for real now. Thank you guys for listening. I think it's a super exciting time in general, even though we kind of ended on a down note. But you know, for games in general, I think that's next what gen I bring is to here. The table. Yeah, that's what Connor brings to the table. Next gen is here and it's good by all measures, and it's really exciting. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Connor and Mike. Yep, anytime. Yeah. And you can follow us at Ad Podcast Game Talk on Twitter. Please like, rate, review us on YouTube and any podcast service you use. And we'll catch you next week. See ya.